of my biggest supporters uh, over the years live on the west coast of Florida, and they were impacted by Hurricane Ian last year. And it breaks my heart to see what these people had to go through and to feel like just to ignore the predictions going into this season would be, you know, not very wise. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, uh, but in an abbreviated version. Since 2003, I've been doing these predictions. I pick, pick five cities I think are going to be impacted during the season. And on average, about two to three out of the five each season get impacted. There's been a couple of seasons where it's a bust, but most of the seasons have been successful. The most important criteria in making my decision is how many name storms is there going to be this year. So I'm going with 10 to 12 name storms. And the reason for that is we're expecting a uh, an Enzo pattern of El Nino at the height of the hurricane season, and that's going to generally lower the numbers. It causes wind shear and dry air in the Atlantic, and there are going to be moments of potential development in between the dry air and the shear, but I don't think we're going to see in the teens. I'm expecting 10 to 12 name storms. I keep track of the statistics on 139 locations in the Atlantic Basin in the Hurricane City database, but what you don't see are all the stats that I keep off the internet and that is for each city I keep tabs of every time that they're impacted by a named storm how many named storms were in the Atlantic Basin when they were impacted I also keep a separate list for how many of these cities when they were impacted by a hurricane how many named storms were in the Atlantic Basin that particular season so I have this map I made and this is since 1990 showing the yellow areas generally get hit when there's slower hurricane seasons the blue areas go to moderate, and then the green areas typically get hit when there's active hurricane seasons. So again, I'm expecting 10 to 12, so I'm kind of leaning in the yellow to blue-ish areas, but mainly in the yellow. Now notice over there, Texas. All, the whole entire coast is yellow. The only reason Texas is not high on my list this year is because they have a smaller window than the rest of the Atlantic Basin. Texas gets hit generally early in the season, June, July, August. It, sometimes September, the great 1900 hurricane, but you um, have, most of them is within that window. And then when you get later into September, it pretty much shuts. And I'm expecting a lot of wind shear this year in the Atlantic Basin. So if it's going to happen for Texas, it's going to have to be early. But then again, any of those yellow and blue areas are at play this season. So here's my hotspot map. Notice four circles on the map. Now this does not mean that the Caribbean is not going to be impacted or Bermuda is not going to be impacted or the Azores is not going to be impacted. These are just the four areas that my number crunching has led to. So the most important to me is the Western Bahamas, as I mentioned in that graphic earlier, the Betsy track or that Joaquin situation. It weighs heavily on that. In fact, Andros Island and Cat Island are one year overdue for a named storm, and Bimini is 12 years overdue for a direct hurricane hit, um, and three years overdue uh, in Cat Island for a hurricane. So all those areas, especially the amount of named storms, generally when Bimini gets hit by a hurricane, there's an average of 10.55 named storms. That goes right into my thinking over there. Now the other area is the Mid-Atlantic. Now I know that was in green on the first map that I showed you. However, I think there's a possibility that anything that develops in the Bahamas may not take the Betsy track. It may take a track north and go affect the Mid-Atlantic states and head up into the northeastern United States. There's a plethora of systems that have hit up there during slower to, to moderate hurricane seasons as opposed to busy hurricane seasons. And when you get up into the Northeast, uh, you have Cape Cod, Massachusetts, which is also in my list here, 20, being 22 years overdue for a direct strike from a hurricane. And they get a hit, when, when they do get hit by hurricanes, there's an average of 12.5 named storms. So they tend to get hit when they're slower to average hurricane seasons up in the Northeast. Uh, Bangor, Maine as well, it could get all the way up there, believe it or not. Uh, they get hit when there's an average of 11.75 named storms in the Atlantic Basin. They don't get hit very often, but they tend to get hit when there's slower hurricane seasons. That's the, the reason for the bigger circle up in the north. And of course, there's the little circle in the northern Gulf. And the reason for that is you have Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Bay St. Louis, and Pascagoula, Mississippi, all due for a named storm in 2023. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be a hurricane, but it, it, there's going to be something impacting that area. And then if you also look at the analog year of 1965 with the Betsy track, if you have a system coming up into Louisiana, that would also impact those areas as well. You could be right or left at that circle and those areas could be impacted. That's why they're 
the circle is kind of tiny there because the statistics all add up to that one area. And finally, here is my track map that I make uh, every time I do predictions. And I've been pretty good at these, actually, by the way. There's been a couple of seasons where I was off on the tracks, but I mean, I, there's been quite a few seasons where I actually almost nailed the exact track. I mean, give her, you know, a little bit of variance in the tracks, but I have two main tracks, and this does not mean that there's only going to be two landfalling hurricanes. It just means that these are the two likeliest courses that I expect to happen throughout the hurricane season, and that is, you know, kind of mid to late season, I expect something explosive in the Bahamas and then uh, coming, making a sharp turn maybe near Florida or over South Florida or something in that range there and then heading north. Um, and then of course, if a trough grabs it, it wouldn't be a factor for the Northeast, but if there is no trough and it's just ridging out there, it could take it right up into the Northeast. The other track is something down in the, in the Caribbean. We have the, maybe a Jamaica, Caymans, Yucatan and then maybe a due north track into the northern gulf even though the northern gulf tends to get hit more when there's active hurricane seasons that those numbers just can't be ignored that I've calculated for that little sliver area of the northern gulf there so those are my two concerns for the 2023 Atlantic hurricanes again I can't emphasize enough this is why I've taken a lot of heat for doing these predictions over the years because the consensus is well you're letting people off the hook and then they could end up getting hit by a hurricane so you never want to let anybody off the hook and I don't, that's not my intention of doing these predictions, but I also think we need more work into figuring out where they're going to go. You can't just ignore that factor and go, here's how many named storms and here's the ace because the average person that doesn't matter to them. What matters is where are they going to go? And I'm doing the best I can to come up with a, at least a formula for this. And it's been rel relatively successful, but every year there's somebody hit that I don't predict. So that's prop that could probably happen again this year. Texas, remember all the yellow I showed there? Any of those maps that you that I showed you, that first map, the, the color-coded yellow and blue areas are always suspect in, in years like what I'm expecting this hurricane season. So what I tell people to do every single hurricane season is be prepared, bat down the hatches as if, uh, you know, get ready as if a major is coming, and then this way you don't have to run around cr like crazy when a hurricane is coming to your area. Let's hope that nobody gets impacted this year. I mean, there have been seasons where nobody gets impacted. There's been plenty of seasons where there's been no hurricane landfall. So we, let's maybe think that that can happen. Um, it's possible, but it's always good to be prepared. And all this video is for is to let those people know in, in my mathematical calculations, these are the areas that I'm concerned about. Anybody is vulnerable this upcoming hurricane season, so be prepared. Thank you for watching. I'm Jim Williams, and we'll see you during the season.